Okay, the internet seems to be working a lot better today. Alright, in this video, I'm going to be working on Florence, South Carolina. This specific railroad crossing is one that I crossed back when I was a truck driver for Western Express. I actually hate this intersection. It is entirely unsafe, like a lot of intersections in South Carolina. North and South Carolina both have this weird obsession with putting intersections dangerously close to railroad crossings. Like, uh, if you were trying to make a left turn in a truck and the light would have turned red on you, you would end up stuck on the tracks and in the train's way. And that is just not safe. In fact, while I was crossing this crossing, I was making a left turn. I had a green left arrow, but as soon as I touched the tracks, the green arrow turned yellow. And I'm like, well, shoot, that's not fair. If I have to, if I get, if I stop at the traffic light, then I'll end up stuck on the tracks. And then if I'm unlucky enough that the crossing were to turn on right after the um, the light changed on me, then I'd get hit, and then I'd end up on YouTube <laughs> for the wrong reasons. But if I run the red light and a cop happens to be watching the area, I could get a ticket for running a red light. So no matter which choice I make, I'm going to end up in trouble. But I chose the one that would result in me not getting hit by a train. So I ended up, having, I ended up driving on the left side of the road so that <laughs> the people on the other side wouldn't try to cross. And then I completed the turn while the light was changing on me. I didn't really have much of a choice because I didn't want to get stuck on the tracks. In fact, I, I was watching a documentary once about these types of um, collisions between trains and trucks. And in one of them, they were showing a specific intersection in North Carolina. A truck stopped at a stop sign and he got hit by a train while doing that. So that's pretty dangerous. North and South Carolina need to get their act together and learn how to make better intersections. Bethlehem actually has some uh, good examples of much safer ways to handle these types of intersections. They usually have a stop sign on the side of the road that doesn't cross the tracks. Meaning if you're crossing the tracks you get the right of way and if you're not you have to stop and wait for the other side of the road. And that is a lot safer in my opinion. They should also program the traffic lights with the ways to detect whether or not a truck is crossing the tracks and program them so that if there's a truck crossing, the light would stay green until it finishes crossing. In any case, let's start making a replica of this incredibly dangerous intersection. <laughs> okay, uh, create route. Okay, Florence, South Carolina. Florence, South Carolina. Region. I'll just use the one that I created. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's the one that comes with the game. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Imperial scale, obviously, because this is America. Okay, let's see, where do we begin? Oops, I accidentally minimized it. Okay. So, sadly the TRC railroad crossings don't seem to have any three lane cantilevers. Let's see, I only have two lane ones. So, uh, I guess I'm just going to have to substitute. Let me see if there's like a, some kind of way that I can extend it to a three lane. Uh, let's see, what do I have? Okay, here's some American style crossings. I know I had a cantilever here. Where did I put it? I can never find these things because there's so many and they all have similar names. Okay, not that one.
No, the pedestal one. Oh, I think it was this one. Okay, this one is two lanes wide. I need somehow to add an extra third lane. How can I do that? Let's see, one plan I have is to attach a traffic signal holder to it and then just place a sign, and I mean place a set of lights on the side of it. Let's see, traffic signal gantry silver. Is this one three lanes wide? And it's only slightly longer than that. Is there a longer one? I don't need an L-shaped one. Oh, here's a long silver one. Okay, now I just attach this to that. Now all I need is a third set of lights to attach to it, theoretically. Uh... Where did I? There should be some. Somewhere. Okay, this might work actually. And then just hang these on that. They have to be the same height though. Maybe I could lift this up. Uh, what are you doing? That's not where I had it earlier. And then... That sort of works. At the very least, it has three set of lights for each lane. <laughs> I guess I'll have to substitute like that then. And in case, let's get to work on the crossing. Okay, this one has three lanes on this side. The road goes almost perfectly from north to south, but it's at a slight angle. Okay, first I'll start with laying the tracks. Actually, I'll start with this road. Man, this is a complicated intersection. I'm not quite sure where to start. I'll just start, pick a section of the road and start there. Okay, these are two lanes that travel straight. One of them can, uh, can travel right. I'll start with this one. Okay, I'll build up to here for now. Oops, what in the world are you doing? That's not what I was trying to do at all. Oh, well, it's practically a straight line then. 118.7 feet to south. Okay, now I need a Two lane one way street. Uh, what's the name of that road? Here we go. Now I need a one lane road for traffic turning left. This is the only road that I know of and it's the only one that I've used. There are probably others somewhere on the game. I just haven't found them yet. Where is it? It's always really hard to find because it's re really well hidden amongst the other surrounding roads. Okay, what do I have here? Double solid yellow. Oh, here it is. That's the one I was looking for. 
And this one will be used for the left turning lane. This one has to be slightly higher though. Not that high. That ought to do it. Zero point one meters. Okay, now I just need to place the sign down for the three lanes. Okay. It is 8.5 feet from the stop line. Okay, and that's where the signs go. Now on the real one, the bell is on the gate mechanism, I mean mechanism and not on the, the um, what do you call this thing, the cantilever, but you know, there actually is a cantilever that doesn't have a bell available in the TRC series, but the lights flash a little bit too quickly on those and it wouldn't look right because they wouldn't be flashing in unison. Okay, the two lights go here, and I need a third set of lights, or, nah, it's not long enough for that. Alright, so I'll just put these two lanes over this one. Okay, then I'll use this traffic signal gantry to support the third set of lights. Okay, this goes here. And then this set of lights gets rotated. Now, since I've never seen these crossings activate, I'm not sure if the bells continue ringing while the um, gates are already down or not because I haven't seen it activate yet. But most railroad crossings in North and South Carolina, the bells do ring until the gates go up. So I think it's safe to assume that that's what happens at this crossing. Okay, the track sign is visible. Actually, no, there's only one track here, so there's no need for a track sign. Let's see, there is a bell plus sound. The bell will ring continuously. I haven't named it yet, I'll do that later. Right now I'm just programming it. All right, there's no bell, that's it. Okay. Ugh, doesn't look exactly right, but since I don't have any three lane cantilevers, that's all I can work with. <laughs> okay, let's get closer. I need a closer look so I can get a look at the um, crossing gate the gate doesn't go up at a 90 degree angle because of this horrible mess of power lines all over the place and so for that reason it locks at an angle and some railroad crossings they just fold in half but I guess that wouldn't be practical here okay so the gate has three lights on it it's probably, let's see, 10, 20, it's probably 32 feet long. Okay. It's got an e-bell on it, but since the cantilever that I'm using already has an e-bell, then I'll just use one that doesn't have one. Because there, there isn't really much of a need for two e-bells on the same side of the crossing. That would just be a waste of energy. 
Okay, let's see. 32 feet long. This one ought to work. Now, since I can't control the angle that these gates go up at, they're going to end up colliding with the wires, probably. Hmm. It doesn't feel like this gate is long enough. It should be, though, because... I mean, it should be long enough because most lanes are 8 to 10 feet wide and this gate is 32 feet. Well, I'll have to test it to see. I may end up even having to move it. Now, I need more crossbuck signs because the real crossing has one crossbuck for each lane of traffic. So, oh my goodness, it's spawning cars in the wrong direction. I'll fix that later, obviously. Let's see, what type of cross bucks do I have? Okay. Cross buck. This is an American one? It looks Canadian. Well, I mean, Canada is still part of America, obviously. I haven't seen an American one with um, red wording on it. Let's see. I just need the cross book. Man, there's so many of them. Most of them have a pole, though. Oh, here's one. This is exactly what I need. I need one, two, three of these. Just rotate them 90 degrees. Man, the longest part of making these crossings is rotating everything into place. <laughs> Okay, how high does this one have to be? Oh. Okay, now I need another one here. Needs to be a little bit higher than that. I guess I'll place this one here. Alright, and then there's a final one that goes all the way to the right. Uh, I think I moved it too close. Uh, actually no. Okay, now for the other two lanes. These are two lanes. Yeah, they're two lanes. I should just need another two lane one way street for that. Let's see, the car is going to go this way, so this way. Okay. There aren't any pavement markings on the road to alert you that you're about to cross a railroad crossing. 
In most river crossings where I live, you would see one in the pavement. There isn't even one on this side either. Okay, so... From this corner of this intersection... This is just two lanes when it gets over here. Two hundred forty two point four feet north. Ah, careful. to the east. Twenty three point seven feet to the west. Okay, and obviously I'm gonna make the left, uh, the left uh, lane turn left at this intersection. Okay, so okay, the edge of the intersection appears to be over here somewhere. I guess over here. Kinda hard to tell. Okay, I'll use the left hand side of it. Oops, that's not what I was trying to do at all. No, I'm trying to delete that one. Ugh. I hate when it does this. Just delete everything. Start over from scratch. Okay. Why must you torment me like this? I guess it matters which one of these is the beginning and which one is the end or something. And it just overcomplicates things. Okay, now I gotta remember where I was. Okay, I think I was marking this as the edge of the intersection. Since it's a left turn lane to the left of that. Okay. One hundred eighty two point two feet north. Okay, and now how far to the west? Uh, 
somewhere, I guess over here. Okay, 49.7 feet to the west. That's where the traffic will be turning left onto. But I haven't finished the rest of the intersection yet. Okay. Now, as far as that road is concerned, it's just parallel to this one. That's the wrong direction, my bad. All right, how long is this intersection? Okay, about two hundred two hundred eight point. Uh, 209 feet long. Alright, so this is where the intersection ends. Supposedly. Then just straighten that up. probably make more sense when it's completed. <laughs> I guess I'll use this lane for turning right then. Okay, how many lanes of the road that you'll be turning onto? Okay, it's just two lanes in that direction. There's also a yield lane for traffic turning right. You can go either straight or right through this lane, it looks like. Oh, this one does have railroad crossing markings on it. They're a little bit further back than they normally would be. You can barely see the pavement markings here because they're so faded. I guess South Carolina has a very low road pavement budget or something. <laughs> okay, so... Seventy nine. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to build enough of the road so I can build the other side of the crossing. Okay, fifty six point three feet north. Okay, north from where it turns left. Fifty six point three feet. Fifty four feet.
Okay. I guess it goes here. Oh, wrong road. That looks a little bit off. I'm gonna recheck that later. Hmm, that would be a little bit off. Okay, so I need a left turn lane to the left of this one. Uh, wrong way again. Please do not do that. <laughs> Turn lane would be really short if that were the case. Uh, I'll see what, how it turns out. Okay, so. turning on to so I'll basically just be merging with the two lane road that's already there hmm. making a one lane road merge with a two lane road is usually not easy to do in this game without the traffic s uh, swerving all over the place okay let's see what I can do with this okay 45.3 feet east assuming this is to scale <laughs> I'm starting to feel like it's not. Okay, you gotta move this one because it's in the way. Seventy seven point eight feet north. Hmm. Uh, okay. So about over here, hmm, well that would mean that this has to be moved up some. I think one of these sides of these intersection, this intersection is on a different scale than the other one. Feels kind of uneven. In any case, this lane would merge onto this road here. Kind of. Should probably just go here. This is a sharp turn. <laughs> okay, I need an invisible road. Preferably one that I can see in Surveyor. Being able to see the road in Surveyor makes it, makes it a lot easier to edit it. This one, is this one visible in Surveyor? 
This one I think is also visible in driver. But it's underground so it shouldn't matter. to see a car try to turn left so I know what it looks like. Oh, they just crashed right into each other. Hopefully the traffic lights will prevent that from happening in the future. <laughs> okay, two lanes. One of them can turn left. The other one can go straight. But I'm just going to have them both go straight because it's easier that way. To make some of the cars turn right, I would need a different invisible road on the right turning lane. And since they can also go straight in this lane, that's fine as well. Okay, so I need this lane to go... One hundred ninety-two point two feet south. Okay, and 196 feet to the east. Okay, I guess that's possible. Oops, wrong one. I need to use this road. Okay. That was a pretty sharp left turn. But what else can you do? Let me see if there's a way I can make it a little bit wider though. Ugh, no matter what, it's probably going to look weird. Okay, one, two, three, four, five lanes here. Okay, what about the other direction? The other direction has a left turning lane. Okay, 51.4 feet north. I measuring <laughs> left turning lane on this side. Okay. All right. So 
so that's where Okay, so this lane has to turn left. I guess. Oops, wrong direction. Okay, now I just use the invisible. No, the invisible road. No, the, not that one. The invisible one. There we go. and switch on to the right lane because it's simpler that way. Okay. And there you go, the last two lanes that I have to build. Man, this looks like a mess. Hopefully it'll look better when I finish it. Okay, I got left and right turns. is turning left. Okay, now where should I put the other sign? Alright, using this one as a guide. The other one should be 138.4 feet away. Hmm. Something must be wrong with this road if it's too far. Alright, just place it there then, because I can't move it any further north. Okay, I need to figure out what type of sign goes here. Okay, where am I? Okay, here we go. There's a mechanical bell on this one. This one appears to have side lights on the pole. Cantilever also appears to be at an angle. It looks like it's facing this road more. Oh yeah, it's got side lights on both sides. And it only has one set of lights. Despite the fact there are two lanes here. Well, that's the way they decided to do it, I guess. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, I'll need this one to go here. for this side and one of these for the other side and I'll need a 24 foot gate let's see 10 20 24 uh, let's see where can I find one with mechanical bells on them uh, One of these has an. Here's one with a mechanical bell. This one ought to do nicely. Okay. Make sure these are facing the correct direction. Then I just need something to support them with. Actually, they can probably go directly onto the pole. Yeah, but they'd have to be a little bit higher than that. Let's see what they look like now. Yeah, that looks about right. I'm gonna have to move these when programming them now. Alright, that can't go there because it's in front of a sign. Actually, how high are these lights on the crossing? They're actually below the cross buck, just above the regular lights. So these need to be lowered a little bit. Okay. Something like 0 0.5, that's the wrong one. No, I'm not trying to lift the cantilever, I'm trying to lift the uh, lights. Okay, let me just lift the cantilever out of the way then. And then bring it back down. There, that looks a little bit better. Looks almost like the real one. Alright, since this one has a mechanical bell on this side. Oh yeah, I haven't programmed how long till the gates go down. Let's do four. That's a pretty safe number. <laughs> the bell will ring continuously, like most of them do in South Carolina. Okay, now for the cantilever. No sound for this one. Nothing more to do for that one for now. Let me move this out of the way so I can program these. Alright, these don't have to be programmed either. Well, for now anyway. I'll program them when I start laying down the traffic stoppers. Okay, let's see. I have the traffic lights and the cantilevers. Now I just need to figure out where to lay the track. Oh no, it's taking a while to load. Okay, just finished loading. Alright, from this one... Eleven point five feet south to the nearest rail. Eleven point five, eleven point six. Okay. How far is the track? this one thirty two point nine eight feet oh 
Okay, so more like 33 feet. Okay, so... What track should I use? There is one pretty good one. This one's got gray ballast. I think this is the one I've been using. I wonder why it's shaded where it touches the road, and that's weird. Okay, I need a track crossing. Alright, the crossing starts 17.5 feet down the line. That's not quite right. I'll just make the entire thing a crossing. Okay. I'll attach this here. Attach that there. In the middle, I'll install an asphalt crossing. Man, I haven't even gotten started on the traffic lights yet. Okay, it looks more or less like the real crossing. driving in South Carolina I actually almost hit a car which was pretty stressful for me I was driving a truck on 95 North I-95 North and um, while there was a car merging on the highway I slowed down so it so he could get onto the highway but I don't know I guess I'm guessing he was just stupid as soon as he got onto the highway, he slammed on his brakes and almost made a complete stop in the middle of the highway, and I almost hit him. That was very stressful. In fact, sometimes I still have nightmares about it. I still don't understand why the guy slammed on his brakes. Like, he had plenty of space to get onto the highway. <laughs> I was going slower than he was. There was no reason he wouldn't have made it onto the highway. I don't know what he was thinking. But at least he's not as crazy as the guy that slammed his car into the back of the truck when I was in Texas. He got mad at me for going too slow and then he just rammed into the back of the truck. And then he got mad at me for his car getting damaged. And I'm like, what did you think was gonna happen when you slammed into the truck? <laughs> Anyway, it's getting pretty late, so I'm going to end it here. I guess when I come back to this crossing, I'll start work on the traffic lights. Anyway, thank you for watching this live stream, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.